Hello and welcome to another Retro Core hardware review. Now normally we take a look at something from China or a game console of some sort, but today we're going to be looking at something which I use to capture video. This is a recent addition to my collection of capturing devices. It's from Klona Alliance and it's known as the Klona Alliance Box Pro. It records videos and playbacks instantly. Basically this is a video capture device which requires no PC at all. You don't need a PC when using this. Now this particular unit is actually a new one. I have two of these now. So let's take a look at what's in the box. Okay, so inside the box we have this generic cardboard box. And because this is a Japanese version, we get a photocopied instruction manual in Japanese. Okay. Now, obviously, I presume the Western version is going to come with a proper instruction manual, not some photocopied one. Okay. We get a nice little remote control, which is actually kind of useful if you don't want to get off your <laughs> backside and control the machine. All the controls you need are on here. So if you take out the packet, we can see we've got our resolution choices. Various controls here to play back on whatever. And we also have some input buttons up here, HDMI, VGA, uh, YP, BPR, and AV, composite in other words. So in a composite component. No, nope, composite, that's right. We can also change the aspect ratio as well. Very important when recording retro games. But we'll take a look at that later on in more detail. We have the device itself, which is actually very, very small. As you can see, it's a tiny little box. Infrared input sensor on the front. Saw snapshot to take a screenshot and record and stop. It's that simple to use. Just press record when you want to record something and press again to stop. On the back, you can see we've got various inputs. We've got the power input there, HDMI in. This one says MMI in and that is out. And that is P to PC, that's uh, the USB interface. Now, MMI in is actually the multi-interface in, and I'll show you the cable for that in a moment. On this side, we've got a line in and a line out for audio and a mic, and also the connector for the storage. So that's where you plug in your USB card or micro SD card reader or external hard drive goes into here. And that's about it on the device itself. The bottom, nothing at all. Okay, so here is that multi-input cable that I was talking about. So as you can see, it looks like an HDMI port at one end. And on this end, we have all our various inputs. Now this is very useful, look at that. We've got a proper VGA in, so you can record Dreamcast from VGA, no problem, or record another PC. We've also got our components and composite video in as well. Also in the box, we've got the basic micro USB cable. That's for connecting, connecting up to a PC. An HDMI cable to connect it to the TV and the power brick. This is a Japanese model, of course. And it says it inputs 100 to 240 volts. So it is actually multi-voltage. And output is five volts, 2000 milliamps. All right, so that's all you get. And that's all there is to it. It is very, very basic, yet it works like a charm. Okay, let's connect this thing up to a device and show you it in action. So here we are with the device all set up and as you can see, it's quite compact. When it's powered up, the HDML logo lights up in blue. We have this cable going out to the TV. This is from the console we've got connected to it and this is our power in. And we're using a 16 gigabyte uh, USB stick. It's uh, formatted to FAT32. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Now, if we take a look up at the TV, we can see we have the analog Mega SG connected up. All right. But what we want to do is see the interface of the capture device. So we can do that very simply by pressing the menu button on the remote. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the menus a little bit closer up. Okay, so first off we have system time. Now what this means is that you can actually program this device to record at a scheduled time, which is really handy if there's something on TV that you want to capture or something that's broadcasted on whatever satellite or something and you want to capture at a certain time, just set this box up to do that. Okay, we've got the schedule recording menu right there. Headset mixing on or off. Now that is going to be very useful for people who do live streaming, meaning you can connect this up to OBS on your PC, live stream and capture everything. Bit rate set. Okay, well we can have the record loop on or off there. And we have various settings. So we have a limited and we have unlimited bit rate. Now I believe unlimited is a constant uh, bit rate. So we'll keep it on that. Okay, into the second set of options. We can choose various different languages here, very useful, but we'll keep it on English. Change the on-screen display transparency, the amount of time it stays on, tells you what firmware you have there. Sound mode standard, or what do we have? Music, movie, now basically it just changes the equalization, but we'll leave it on standard. And we also have an equalizer in there as well to mess about with if that's your thing. Picture mode, again we've got different variations which change the contrast, the color, and so on. We'll just leave it on standard for now. Color temperature, of course, and aspect ratio. Now you can see here we have some zoom functions. Notice the analog logo here growing in size. So we've got two zooms, 16 by nine aspect and four by three aspect ratio and automatic. We'll keep it on auto for the time being. Oh, and panorama, nice. So as you can see, the menu system is very user friendly. It's very simple to get through, no issues whatsoever. Okay, so let's talk about capturing a video. So let's exit the menu here. What we will do is we will start up a game. So let's run the cartridge. Okay, I think we'll go with Devastator. Let's start up Devastator. Okay, now we want to be recording this video footage here. So what we do is we take the remote and as you can see here, we have the record button. So we just hit record while pointing at the machine. And as you can see, it's come up recording there in the top corner of the screen. So that is recording what we are now seeing. And also if we take a look at the actual device, you will notice that the HDML logo at the top is also flashing to let you know that it is recording. We just happen to have a bonus that the USB stick plugged into this also has a flashing light to let you know it's being accessed. Okay, so let's do a little bit of gameplay and see how well it records the footage. Okay, so this game is running at 60 frames per second. And we are recording this with the camera at 60 frames per second as well. But how is the capture device doing? Okay, I think that's enough uh, gameplay there to see if it's uh, capturing the image clean enough. Okay, so we're going to press stop on the remote. Okay, stop recording as come up. Okay. Okay, so let's try and play back the video that we just recorded. And we can do that by hitting the playback button here on the remote. So let's press the playback button. And we should be able to see. There we go, we got the menu up. So photo, no, we didn't do any captures. Uh, film, yes. Let's take a look at what we've recorded. Okay, here we go. That's the one we just recorded. Let's press play. All right, so it's playing in this little box here in the middle of the screen and we can see the resolution is 1080p. One audio track, no subtitles and no program data and the file size. Okay, so let's see that in full screen and see how good the quality is. Yep, the playback looks pretty good here on the actual TV. We can also fast forward through the footage as you can see, just like a digital video player, and we can play it again. So let's press, let's press play. 
and we can pause it. And of course, we can also skip different tracks if we had more than one track. Okay, now here's the thing. That is a 1080p file, but it is only playing back at 30 frames per second. Let's take a look at a direct feed of this video playing back. Now it may surprise you to know that the Cloner Alliance box does not only accept 720p signals, 1080p signals and of course SD signals, but it can also accept 4K signals. As you can see, we've got the Xbox One X connected up to it right now. Now the footage we just saw being recorded was recorded in 1080p, but it's at 30 frames per second. We are now going to set the box to record at 60 frames per second, but to do that, we have to put the recording values at 720p which we have now done, although it also says output 720p. And we are going to hit the record button on the remote. Okay, so we are now recording at 60 frames per second. Now, there might be some people out there thinking, 60 frames per second at 720p, what the hell? But I'll let you into a little secret. Every time you see gameplay footage on my channel, even though it's presented in 4K sometimes or 1080p, it's always recorded at 720p, 60 frames per second. And you probably never even noticed that. In fact, not, you probably never even noticed that. You haven't noticed that. And that's because when you edit videos, the software in the video editing package does such a job, good job at upscaling the video, you'd never know. So let's take a look at this running on the screen through, through the uh, actual video camera. Okay, so we've got some nice smooth scrolling going there, and what we're going to do is take a look at this played back. Okay, so let's try a little bit of Streets of Age 4. Let's see how smooth this looks. Gotta go, now we'll go uh, Cherry because she can run. So as you, as you can see, it's looking fairly good on the TV there. No problems whatsoever. So don't forget this image is coming through the capture box. But it's still lovely and clean. Okay, and now let me show you a direct feed of the video capture we have just taken. something else we can do which is really cool is take the screenshots as mentioned earlier so let's just take a screenshot from this game right now pressing the button let's see now okay we should have just captured that as a screenshot let's do another one uh, let's take a picture now all right so again let's go back to the playback menu and this time we'll go to photo and there you can see the images which I just captured. Lovely, and we can make that a full screen image just by pressing play. There you go, an instant screenshot from the Xbox One. So here's a test of the device to see how good it is. Is it going to play back Daytona USA, which does run at 60 frames per second, smoothly? 
Let's take a look at the video recording that I did of this. Yes, I'm sure you can agree that the video capture is beautiful. So there you go, that is the Klona Alliance, Klona Alliance Box Pro. A very nice device, very small, doesn't take up much room. Very easy to use, super simple, don't even need to read instructions. Takes very good quality video. Don't be put off by the fact that it only records 1080p at 30 frames per second because you can do 720p at 60 frames per second and upscale it in your video editing software and nobody will ever notice. As I'm sure you guys have never ever ever noticed on my channel. In fact, when I put the first battle of the ports out in 1080p, everyone was amazed at the picture quality. Little did they know that all that video game footage was recorded at 720p at 60 frames per second. So yeah, don't be put off by the fact that it only does 60 frames per second at 720p. It's still a very good device. So I'm going to put some links in the video description down below so you can buy this from Amazon. They are completely unaffiliated, but if you do want to get one, pick them up from Amazon. Alright, until next time guys, take it easy, keep on gaming and enjoy your games. See ya!